Hello Internet, this is Scott with Scott's Garage and today I'm privileged to work on my son's 2005 Ford Focus. This Ford Focus comes with the 2.0 Duratec engine and it has an automatic transmission. Now the resenting problem uh, is this, that uh, he was uh, uh, driving and out of the blue um, indicator here, uh, overdrive off came on and it was flashing and the car didn't act correctly, he pulled over and, and that. Uh, and this has happened uh, one other time. Um, and this uh, video is to kind of explain what that overdrive is all about and, and to fix his problem. Now, uh, with the overdrive off, uh, there is a little switch right here. And uh, it, it's meant that when you push it, that the overdrive in your transmission turns off. So I'm going to push it right now. And as I do, you can see on the dash it says overdrive off. Uh, I'm controlling that uh, again with this little button and you can turn it on and off at, at will. Now what's this for? Well if you're, if you're traveling say on mountain roads and you're going downhill and you want more control of the vehicle, you don't want it uh, shifting automatic or going you know, to higher gears but keeping a lower gear um, at your fingertips then you can, you can easily control it. Now that was not my son's problem though. Uh, he didn't hit this switch. You could sometimes accidentally hit it, but, but he didn't. He's aware of that. Um, he was just driving. His, his hand wasn't anywhere close to this. And you know this light came on, but it was, it was flashing. Um, now if it's flashing, it means that there um, is, a, is a problem uh, with the transmission. And um, it went away. It, it, it stopped flashing and you know, returned to normal, but it, you know, so it's intermittent. Um, now, the, the, the weird thing is, is that there's no engine light on. Uh, even though there's a problem, you know, it's like other codes that come on, you'll see, you know, check engine light. It, it, none of that is apparent here. So what I did is I hooked up my OBD reader. Uh, this is one that uh, works through a uh, wireless uh, network. And I have a, um, an app on my phone called uh, Dash Command, which I really like. And, um, simply uh, the settings of the phone, you know, you put it to network and change it to OBD reader. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, on this, um, I can run uh, diagnostics and you can see the uh, engine codes. It's code P0732, which is gear to incorrect ratio. Um, and what that uh, tells me and is that um, that gear two, which I, I think is solenoid B uh, in the transmission. There are several solenoids, six of them total, uh, but uh, one of the solenoids not uh, working correctly. And therefore, if something's not working correctly in transmission, it automatically then uh, you know, turns off the overdrive and it flashes and you know, it's just a, a warning there's, there's something wrong. Okay, here are the items needed for the repair. Uh, first of all, the solenoid. Now, solenoids A and B uh, are identical. Um, I'm going to replace the A because that's the one that uh, is indicated most often for overdrive uh, issues. And so I purchased that as about 48 bucks lifetime guarantee out of Riley's. Uh, I also thought I might as well get a filter, and it comes with a, a really nice uh, neoprene gasket. So I'll be using that as about 19 bucks. And I also got some. Uh, some transmission fluid that's for the forward focus. Uh, the Just make sure you get the, the right type. Uh, don't put in the wrong fluid. Now, uh, the overall capacity of the transmission is seven quarts, but when you're just uh, basically taking off the pan, uh, you're gonna lose uh, two quarts, roughly. So I only bought two quarts. And uh, the other thing I'll be needing, it looks like for everything, an eight millimeter uh, socket and ratchet. So I have everything uh, set to go. So what I'm going to do is uh, raise the, the vehicle up in the front uh, using my jack and then I'm going to use at least one jack stand, probably two jack stands uh, underneath so it's just safely uh, elevated. Never ever simply rely on a jack. Um, people get killed by doing that. Uh, make sure you have jack stands as well. So once I elevate the car, um, I'll be using 8mm uh, ratchet, uh, removing uh, the bolts uh, for that. and. I'll be showing you a process of uh, draining the fluid. Okay, uh, draining the fluid, transmission fluid, can always be a messy job once you take the pan off. There's no 
drain plug in the sport focuses. So here, here's something you can do uh, just to save yourself a mess. Uh, if, if you have, uh, I just have a little kit. This is actually a, a brake bleeding kit, but I'm not gonna be using the, the fluid again, so I don't mind uh, using this uh, to uh, to drain the transmission fluid. But um, this is where the, the dipstick is for, for transmission, and this goes to the pan. So I'm, I'm simply uh, inserting this uh, rubber hose uh, to the bottom, uh, and uh, once I'll do that, I'll, I'll just uh, use the, the pump and basically siphon the transmission fluid out, and that will save me some time and also mess um, here in a few minutes. Kind of want to show you the workspace underneath here. Uh, the transmission is underneath the driver's side of the vehicle, so that's the left side as the car is facing forward. Um, and uh, here, here's the pan. So uh, there are a series of eight millimeter bolts around the, the edge, and I've already loosened them. Um, I'll be uh, re uh, loosening the remaining remaining bolts. And since I siphoned uh, the fluid out, uh, I'll be able to drop it down without much mess. I'm, I still have a pan though, there's gonna be uh, some um, fluid left, and I'll be dropping the pan down. Okay, here's the underside after I took the pan off. Uh, to get the pan off, I also did have to use a little bit of uh, persuasion uh, using a flat edge screwdriver and just a little bit of a tap with a hammer on this corner and it just loosened and it, it came right off. Um, I had a, another bolt left in, I just held it up and screwed it and it <clears throat> came right off. Um, so the, the solenoid that I'm replacing is right here. It's the middle one, but the middle one is, this is solenoid A. A and B. A and B are the same part number, uh, but solenoid A, this white wire uh, going uh, towards it, and it's this uh, solenoid that's associated with overdrive. Uh, therefore, uh, that's the one that I'm going to replace. I'll leave the others in place. And there are six total. I'm not going to explain what those are, um, but solenoid A is the middle one. I'm also be I'll be replacing this filter. Uh, it just uh, pushes in place, so I'll just pull this one off. I'll take the uh, electrical connection off first, and then pull that filter off and and put the new filter in place. Okay, I removed the connector. It was uh, quite simple. I just uh, push up on the little tab there and it, it pulled right out. Now that's an eight millimeter bolt and I'll loosen that and I'll pull that solenoid right off. Okay, uh, here's the new solenoid. There are two O-rings and I always put oil on O-rings to, to seat them. And I'm gonna do the same here. So just a little bit of the transmission fluid on the O-rings and then I'll, I'll push it in place and I'll tighten up the eight millimeter bolt. Okay, next you will want to clean thoroughly the pan, uh, both uh, underneath the car, the, the block side, uh, but also the, the pan side. The, the original sealant was silicon and I used a uh, lacquer thinner and just uh, very carefully uh, went around with a straight edge, edge razor, razor blade Got the vast majority of it off. It's almost impossible to get all of it off, but I was very careful not to gouge or anything, and it's uh, it's nice and smooth. I did the same with the, the under service. Also, I might as well clean the pan uh, thoroughly. Uh, this is a magnet. If, if you see a bunch of metal around this magnet, uh, you probably have more problems to fix than the solenoid. Uh, but uh, just uh, this was just oily and stuff. Just clean it up, and it fits right there. Um, now, this particular kit that I uh, purchased, uh, called Power Torque, um, it comes with a neoprene gasket, a very nice one, and they recommend not using silicon or any glue to tack this. I've had problems in the past where you don't use any glue like that, and you get underneath and things shift and you can't find the hole uh, for the bolts. But I've noticed that uh, these bolts are just, uh, or the, the big gasket is just the right size. You can, you can put it in about a third of the way. It's going to hold it in place nice, nicely. I'll do that with all of them, and then when, uh, go from underneath. The holes will line up, and uh, then I will do a sequence of uh, torquing of the bolts in. Okay, I have all my bolts uh, pushed in place through the, the gasket. It's all set to go. The pan is extremely clean. Likewise, I put the uh, the new filter in, hooked up the electrical clip. Uh, likewise, the solenoid is in place, 
eight millimeter bolt and the white wire is connected to it. So I'm all set to put the pan back in place and what I'll be doing is I'll be putting it in, holding it up by hand, tightening uh, some of the bolts by hand and actually tightening all of them by hand and then I'm going to do a, a series of uh, torquing it and you always start whatever pan it is, oil pan, uh, transmission pan or valve cover. You start in the center on one side and tighten it and then opposite side tighten it and then and then just do a, a clockwise um, pattern and, and so you're you're going around until um, you know it, they're all uh, tightened uh, torque to spec. Uh, this is uh, 12 foot pounds. What I'll do is again I'll, I'll hand tighten them and you know get it less than 12 and then I'll use the the torque wrench. <laughs> Okay, it's time to put uh, transmission fluid in to make up for uh, what we took out, we siphoned out. I'm guessing it's between one and two quarts, so I'm just going to put a quart in, measure it, and we'll just keep going until the dipstick is accurate. Um, I, I will have to, though, um, level the car uh, to get an accurate reading. I think I'm going to put in a quart uh, to begin with just to make sure there's no leaks. All right, we're almost finished with this project. Uh, the next thing I want to do is completely clear the codes in the car's computer. Uh, it's called a PCM, Powertrain Control Module. Uh, it's broken into two parts, uh, the computer that controls the, the engine and then also the, the computer that controls uh, the transmission. But it's uh, again called a PCM. And uh, to do that, you have to, first of all, disconnect the negative battery post. This is a 10 millimeter. Simply pull the cable, and the next thing you want to do is connect the cable, not the post, but the cable to the, the positive um, post and cable, and you will uh, simply use a jumper for that. So this is a jumper I uh, created with some alligator clips. And you let it sit for a few minutes, and. And it'll, it'll drain the capacitors. Uh, capacitors are stored energy and your car has several uh, capacitors. Um, so if you simply disconnect the battery, it doesn't really clear anything. You have to drain the capacitors as well. And to do that, uh, this is the procedure. After this sits for a few minutes, we'll hook the battery back up, the battery uh, cable and to the negative post. And then we'll go inside the car and we will uh, go through the procedure of uh, clearing uh, the codes uh, using the phone app. Okay, what I'm going to do now is uh, clear the codes um, in the OBD using the OBD2 reader and uh, dash command on my phone, and so uh, everything is uh, is connected, and I, I simply hit uh, clear codes. Yes. Okay, all the codes have cleared. And what I'm going to do now is the car has been warming up uh, now for uh, about five, six minutes. So the computer is uh, storing uh, data on idle, correct idle speed and, and that. So I'm just going to drive moderately. I'm not going to drive aggressively. And we want to just get uh, good data uh, put back into uh, the computer. Okay, everything is uh, shifting very smoothly and correctly, and I'm pretty sure that uh, I have this uh, fixed. This is Scott with Scott's Garage. Hope you li liked the video. If you did, please hit like. Just take an extra moment, hit like. It makes all the difference in the world. Thank you. Thank you.